And my name is Ms. G. Let's have some entertainment conversation. Now, we've started the conversation on the effects of COVID-19 on the on Africa's show business. And now today we are narrowing down the conversation to the effect COVID-19 has had on the movie sector in Africa. You know that we have some giants in Africa when we talk about the movie industry. And connecting with us, uh, let's start from the biggest uh, uh, movie production country, uh, Nigeria. Connecting with us is Kunle Afolayan. Kunle Afolayan is an award-winning producer, director, and actor himself. For those of you here in Ghana, remember Phone Swap that featured Lydia Forsen. That was his production. He's done great productions uh, over the period. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. And it's really nice Zooming meeting everybody here. Great. And then let's go. Let's go to... Good morning. Uh, <laughs> Let's go to Burkina Faso, uh, where we have a Ghanaian who has decided to make us proud beyond our shores there. Uh, he won an award during the first Paco in 2019, came here to Ghana to win the award during the Goldie Movies 2019 for his short film. Welcome, sir. He's Ambrose Cook. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, too. Thank you, uh, TV3 and you yourself, uh, Ms. G, uh, for putting me on this panel amongst this great giant of filmmaking in Africa. Beautiful. And let's talk about ladies before we come to Peter Sedufia. Let's talk about uh, Madame Brenda Elong. Uh, she is Omega One Entertainment CEO. I saw her pictures at uh, the AMVCA looking all dashing. And she's produced mm -hmm. uh, a lot of movies. The first of uh, her production is Triangle of Tears. And then she had Decoded that had our own Van Vika feature. Thank you very much, Madame, for joining us all Thank the way you. from Cameroon. Thank you. And then to Thank South Africa. Uh, we have from South Africa joining us uh, is a renowned producer. She has her own company, a successful production company for that matter, called Televisionaries. Uh, she's been part of uh, movie productions across Africa in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya. She's been part of some big reality shows from Big Brother Africa to Tinsel and also South, uh, The Voice South Africa. A lot of productions uh, she's worked on. Thank you very much, Madam Erica Klopa, for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay, now to our very own Peter Sedufia, award-winning director, producer, known for KTK, Side Chick Gang, and in this 2020, Aloe Vera. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Miss. How and are I'm you doing? Yes, uh, thank and you very much. <laughs> good morning to everyone else. It's, it's nice meeting everyone. I, I, now I can attach the faces to the names. Yes, you can now attach faces to the name, and I'm sure that the conversation will go on beyond the Zoom conversation. Now, let's start off with you, Kunle. I know that as a huge production nation, there's been a lot that has been lost within this period. Yeah. Well, um, I think um, whatever it is or what has happened globally, it's something that has affected... Uh, not just our industry, but every sector. And um, uh, beyond work, it also uh, must have affected um, people's morale. And um, we, I mean, a lot of people must have um, adapted to um, the new world and then figure out, okay, post, post um, COVID, what's going to happen? For me, uh, I can speak a bit about, you know, I mean, Nigeria and of course uh, about myself. Um, a lot of people in Nigeria now, um, especially people in the entertainment industry, uh, seem to be doing what the rest of the world is doing, which is, uh, um, sorry, I want to kill this, uh, what's up? Okay, I think you're getting some interference uh, whilst you speak uh, to us. Yeah, I just, how do I okay, so whilst you work on that, let me switch to... Uh, are you ready? Or what? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so right. please go uh, ahead. So, um, everybody seems to uh, develop a strategy uh, in a way that you find a way to put your content out there, even if uh, cinemas have been locked and um, you know, uh, gathering of people to, to watch content together is being um, um, stopped. 
Um, I see a lot of people creating content majorly for online streaming. Um, and I think this is the same thing in, in Hollywood. Uh, a lot of the blockbuster films that were originally scheduled to release uh, in cinemas this year have all decided to go on Netflix and other platforms. Um, and this is something that, um, you know, I mean, we're also doing. We have a new film, which is in post-production, and we plan to, you know, I mean, do cinema run before going to other platforms. But now um, we've uh, decided that, look, um, instead of, because we're not sure when uh, the, the whole thing will be open fully, we've decided that, okay, we're going to, we've been talking to Netflix, and um, I think it's going to go on Netflix first, I mean, this year. Uh, I won't say it as, I think it's, it's something that has taught us a new, I mean, different new ways, you know, to survive. Um, and I, when things like that happen, for me, I don't dwell much on the negativity uh, or the setback. I try to, you know, make use of the current situation and then maybe reposition myself. Okay, we'll come back to speak about the digital platforms and how we can, you know, uh, concentrate on having our productions there. But in uh, Ouagadougou, I hear that Burkina Faso has a great cinema culture. Now, I've been reading that elsewhere in the world, they are about to reopen cinemas. What is going to happen is that they are going to ensure social distancing. I'm trying to find out if things will be the same if the cinema culture uh, is reintroduced in Burkina Faso where you are. Considering the stigmatization and all the fear that people have when it comes to COVID-19, is it going to work or we lost out completely on the cinema culture now? Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to start this. When you, when you take, I mean, the, the effect of this uh, pandemic varies continental-wise. I mean, in Africa, especially I can speak for Burkina Faso, um, it's not like we really had a big cinema culture here. We have only about four cinemas, which were not being filled anyway. So this thing didn't really affect it that much. It affected very, uh, very few of them. But then if we ever have to go back uh, into cinemas, I mean, nothing is ever going to be the same again. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's forget about film cinemas and everything. Nothing is ever going. I mean, when you enter a taxi, you, you have a way of sitting down looking at your, 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 your colleague passenger. Nothing is ever going to, I mean, be the same again. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I can't even picture how it's going to be like in the cinemas. I mean, sitting next to people, people coughing, you can't even freely cough or do anything. But then, hey, let's look forward to it and hope for the better. But is, 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 we are hoping for the better. Is there any hope for us uh, when it comes to commercialization beyond the digital platform? Because mind you, not everyone is hooked on the digital platform. Is there any hope for us when it comes to uh, the commercial aspect of our movie productions? We, we need to adapt. I mean, this digital platform was already happening before uh, COVID-19. COVID mm. Everything was heading towards that direction. Anyway, it's just that the lifespan was a little bit longer. Two, three years, everything will go on to your, your, your mobile phone, your tablet, and your uh, smart TV. So... I think we need to adapt. We need to gear ourselves towards that aspect of, uh, of the film industry. We need to, um, and we need to, it's about time Africa started, I mean, telling stories our own way to show to the rest of the world because they are going to consume our product and we need to give them what we have. Yeah. Now, let me speak to Erica. Erica, I see in Australia that uh, they're about to start production of uh, a series that is well known there called, okay, is Erica still on or we lost there? Um, I can't find I, her. Yeah. Okay, so I can't see you actually. Okay, now I can see you. Uh, titled, I think yeah. that it's called Neighbours. And they said they are resuming production soon. What they are going to be doing is they are going to be changing camera angles to make the effect of people looking as though they are closed whilst they ensure social distancing and the production crew will be limited. Do you see that happening for us here in Africa? Can we adapt? Can we do this as well? Yeah, I think, you know, um, just with regards to the television industry, 
Uh, definitely in South Africa, strict guidelines have been issued um, for the continuation of productions. And I think we're going to have to adopt the same kind of principles and procedures um, with regards to the very many telenovelas and soaps that are being produced across the continent. Um, I think in Nigeria at any given time, you know, five telenovelas or soaps are actually in production. And a lot of them are location based. Some of them are studio. And I think the ones that are in studio have got, you know, the luxury of three cameras, uh, mostly where, you know, it is possible maybe to focus on the um, very close up shots and then to afterwards kind of just do with taking in consideration the uh, social distancing and doing your medium shots and your wides. So I think, you know, the, definitely we are going to have to uh, amend how we how we shoot and in south africa there's very strict guidelines now that have been issued where you know sanitation uh temperature has to be measured there's a a, a number of crew that you're allowed to have on a set if you on location as well as in studio are and these closed door are these closed door studios or uh open productions as well so uh, some are closed, closed door studios, and then others are pretty much location-based uh, productions. And I think the location-based productions are slightly more challenging because often you have to travel to outside of town um, mm -hmm. and you also have limited resources potentially. But sanitization is imperative on all the projects. Um, you also have uh, an official that now has to actually and confirm whether you are following the rules. Um, so it's it's really challenging from multiple perspectives because now you also it's going to impact schedule. Um, you know it's going to take longer to do the same thing, and also your budgets are going to be impacted because you're going to shoot longer, and you're having to employ additional people that are there specifically to make sure that everything is sanitized, everything is checked, um, that people can social distance. Catering welfare, for, for instance, is also packaged. You can no longer sit in a group. Uh, people have to go for lunch in a staggered uh, fashion. So I think it's, it's everybody sitting um, on this Zoom call, I think, you know, will feel the implications of COVID for, for quite some time until we can actually manage, you know, whatever that may be, whether there is a vaccine, but that's not going to be tomorrow. So. I think we all, as Kunle said, and also Ambrose, you know, you, you, you're having to come up with new ways and you have to stay positive because we can't stop what we do. It's our passion, it's our love, and we, we need to find ways to make it work. Looks like South Africa is preparing. Uh, let's see if uh, in Cameroon they have also thought about how to do their productions. Is everything on hold? Have you eased up a bit? Uh, are you producing yet? Have you returned to the production uh, table? Thank you, Della. Good morning, everybody. I, um, from our own side in Cameroon, I can say that uh, things are, everything is, is actually on hold. And uh, we have productions that were planned that cannot take place because we are putting, a, everyone is coming up with their own strategy to see how people can be protected on set. We're supposed to go on set immediately after this ends, but or there's a there's a there's a, a kind of a liberation of a, of a norms but you don't know when it's going to be liberated so in the meantime everyone is thinking of you know strategies that have to be taken uh productions that are taking place are really kind of very low-key no but as a vice president of the cameroonian uh, uh movie industry uh, there must be a lot of pressure on you because your folks are depending on you and your team to show them the way forward. And if it doesn't look like uh, there's a way forward now, it means that there's pressure on you as a leader as well. Exactly. So we're coming up with our own strategies that we have to approach the government to be able to ease up certain uh, uh, rules that have been put in place. And so what we are doing actually now is to come up with of course, methods of prevention and how we're going to go about because we know best how production goes and 
how people can be protected. So we're coming up with our own strategies that we'll propose to the government so that we don't have uh, bans or laws on production. We don't violate any rules. We just need for those rules to be uh, kind of authorized so that we can move on. But for now, everything is still um, very uncertain. But we are hoping to work on that with the government so that we can ease up production because we have a lot of productions on hold and we're just waiting. Have you so, calculated your losses yet? Uh, for the losses, um, we haven't had any productions going on and there were a lot of productions were planned for this year since uh, there's been nothing since February. So I think the loss has really been enormous. It has been enormous. We can't release any movies. We can't do any premieres. Uh, so it's, it's kind of difficult. Difficult can't indeed. Go from is... production to post-production. Mm. Wow. Peter, here in Ghana, we have some ease of movement. At least 100 people, are we are told, can converge for church services, for events, and all of that. Are you planning on going back to shooting? I know that aloe vera uh, was premiered in March. Uh, do you have intentions of going back to shooting and all of that since uh, there's been some uh, ease on the restrictions we have here in Ghana? Um, thank you, uh, Ms. G. Of course, um, um, my team and I are still in talks to see what we can do within this time. I mean, like Kunle rightly said, I mean, the situation is, is imminent, it's present with us. So how do you uh, move along in these times? And so... My team and I are devising means to go, but that will also mean that rewriting our scripts because some of the scripts that we've had in the past or we have before the uh, situation impounded on us were scripts that involved mass gathering, involved crowd over 100 and, and stuff like that. And what also uh, this is going to do, like uh, the, uh, uh, Germany is trying to see Germany, you mentioned Australia, to do, Australia, uh, Australia, good, it's trying to do, I mean. It, it's it's possible but it also comes with cause the kind of lenses you have to invest in if you don't have the money you can't get some of those lenses that uh, uh, what you call distort uh, special uh, differences and so those are all things but we are communicating we are still deciding but then the, the president says 31st is, is july is when they are going to uh, determine whether to leave the ban but we are still waiting for that point until then we just need to restructure our, our, our probably do something in, in a single uh, location or in a house, a house story where you have two or three people in it. And that also has got to do with uh, um, you deciding that, okay, because there's some kind of uh, 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 ban on uh, closeness, mm -hmm. that's a social distance rule. You, you, you know that you, you need not to write a script that would bring people too close or too intimate. And so these are all uh, restrictions that would, would really change our narrative. And I don't know how possibly is going to be, but we are going to try and see what can. maybe to just set a new convention for, for us to, okay, this is possible and we never knew, if not for this challenge, we didn't have developed this new way of doing this thing. So I think that it's, it's, it's only that the cinemas are going to be affected. As you know, we've not lifted the, 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 the ban or, or the restrictions on the cinema, which I think is, is rather bizarre because uh, if you know the cinemas in Ghana, the maximum, some of the whole stake is like 200 people. And if you divide that by uh, uh, two, you have like 100 people and that can still fill the house. So I don't even know why cinemas were not even allowed in the first place to be part of the, the, the lifting of the restrictions and I've questioned it on multiple platforms and so I still, I still because that is, it's not like Kunle's country in Nigeria that you know that the population is, is big and the cinemas are more and even that I'm sure that there's still going to be a way around it. So uh, for us, we are still under, under lockdown. Let me just say that for the creative industry in Ghana, we are still under lockdown. I'll put it that now, Kula, let's come back to you. Um, uh, uh, your your um, audio is actually off. I don't know if you can hear us, Kunle. Um, okay. Uh, the, the, the com okay, so now I can hear you as well. So the conversation also, just a follow-up on uh, what Erica and Peter have said, is are we now going to alter our scripts to the point that we don't have intimacy anymore? Are we likely to have our films shot virtually where somebody is like I'm you're on, in front of the screen and the camera is shooting you virtually? How are we going to be able to shoot films that we'll still be able to connect with? Is this going to mar the beauty of our productions? Honestly, 
um, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, will not like to hear this, and some people call it insensitive, but for me, look at what is happening around the world, uh, all right? Yeah, I mean, a few weeks about, few, few weeks ago, it was all about, hey, stay isolated, don't go out, and all of that. And now, some catastrophe happened, you know, somewhere in the world, and everybody's out. Okay, hmm. and then a lot of people that are out, I, I look, I, I, you know, because I monitor these things. A lot of them are not wearing masks. A lot of them are not protected. People are fraternizing every, you know, and um, I'm just saying that, look, I never pray for any mishap or any, you know, I mean, disaster to happen around the world. But if truly uh, this COVID thing is a death sentence, I think by now the whole world will be crying, all right? So I, I, I feel, I mean, in Nigeria, they've eased a lot of things. People are moving out. And every day I come out and on my way to the office, you see that things are back to normal. And another thing I've always said is, look, okay, a lot of people that have been put in isolation or isolation center, you put them there six days, and I've had the opportunity of asking some of them what they've been given. And, you know, they mentioned, okay, malaria drug and, uh, you know, vitamin C and all of that. And they are out back and healthy. It means that I don't think it's as crazy as, you know, it's been made to look. I want to believe some people are somewhere, you know, um, milking from all of this disaster. I'm not saying people shouldn't take precautions. I'm not saying all of the lay down rules and you know guides shouldn't be observed. But I feel that, look, the worst disaster will happen by the time people get, uh, by the time the mind of people you know, get affected. And one of the things that help his tension is really entertainment, is music, is film, is comedy, is show. It is what we do. So you can't, I mean, I know there are people out there who are shooting in the, you know, doing their thing, even with all of this warning. The only thing is don't be caught and, um, you know, take precautions, you know, and all of that. I come here, I have meeting with my staff. We, we, we have board meeting. You know, I've shot some of the masterclass thing that I've been doing, even though it's a limited crowd, I mean, it's a limited crew and all of that. But... If you have a way, I will say, what I will say is, look, if there is a way you can manage to, to film and, uh, you know, uh, yeah. and not be all out in people's faces, don't get idle, you know, <laughs> be doing something. Because if not, uh, personally, I feel that, uh, just like they say, an idle mind is, uh, is devil's mind. And um, the last two months, what I've been doing is developing, you know, I mean, ideas and scripts, and I've been talking to writers, and I've been talking to, but at the same time, we have things that have been pending, and there are ways you can always, you can be attending to your pending stuff. Like if you're in post-production, you don't need crowd. If you're in, you know, but I think we just need to, as, in, as I mean, every individual need to find a way, you know, around existing and functioning. Okay, quickly, I think final words from you. Ambrose, I start with you. So uh, people are talking about government intervention because they feel like uh, we've lost a lot already. People have not produced and they don't have money, you know, going forward to reinvest into production. That's if we have to find ways uh, to adapt when, uh, when it comes to production. Ha is anything happening in Burkina Faso where the government is giving some subsidy? Uh, you know, is the government helping in any way? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, first and foremost, we need to know that in our sector, it always lies at the bottom of uh, of any finance minister's budget anyway. So, and with this thing happening, uh, nothing has changed. But then I think the Burkina Faso government has done a, a good job. I mean, the Copyright um, Office uh, sent out, I mean, those registered to the Copyright Office had at least $100 each, which was, I mean, everybody was jubilating about it. And I just heard that the government just... I mean, set aside uh, two million dollars to help people who were into production and were affected by the uh, by the epidemic. 
So I think the, the, in Burkina Faso, I can only speak for Burkina Faso, though. True. Uh, I think they've really done well, yeah. Now, Peter, having heard what is happening in Burkina Faso, uh, I know that uh, people were actually write their names to the collecting data here in Ghana for people who might have lost. I don't know if you registered. I, I haven't registered. Um, I haven't registered. Um, you don't I, need the don't money know. from that, government? That's, that, 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 that's personal reason. I mean, not that I don't need the money from government. It's personal reason. And... Um, I don't know how to explain it, but I haven't. I have. I think it's a good initiative, and I hope that the creative art people would also benefit from it. But you know that you've been in Ghana with me. How long we've been hammering on uh, government's uh, support? I mean, we, we are not asking government to give us money directly and say, "Peter, come for money." And put, no, but they should make great avenues, have some discussion with banks, and have some discussion with some financial institutions to make some kind of package available for filmmakers to access and repay. But all these have, have, have not uh, yielded any, any result. And so uh, that didn't even excite me to even move towards the, the package that has been announced because I feel that I'm just going to try and be among the many people that I've tried. Forgive me, I'm being pessimistic, but that is my, my, my notion. So I just want to be in my corner when I have my money or I have investors that I find uh, privately or independently. I, I get them on board and make my, my, my next film. Erica, um, we are told that the only way to go about this is maximize the virtual platforms that we have, Netflix, Iroko for Africa, and all of that. Tell me what you think can be done in this time with your final words. Um, I think, you know, in South Africa, we've got a couple of broadcasters and uh, producers can still, because we were allowed to go back into production on the 4th of May with certain guidelines. But those um, productions deliver directly to the South African Broadcasting Corporation, to MNET, to ETV, etc. For Netflix, I think, you know, a couple of productions finished off just before the pandemic actually um, hit um, us all. And I think, you know, it's, it's shown us that there's definitely opportunity there. But I think it is also, again, as if the borders remain closed, it becomes very challenging to actually you know, do the kind of international productions that you would like to do, that you would like to put onto a Netflix or a Showmax or a HBO, etc. And for that, you know, you're always looking, or most of the time, often, you are looking to do travel, whether it is on our continent. Um, you know, we were busy with a project in Nigeria that was actually halted. So as soon as that becomes uh, or we are told that we can actually travel and we can go and shoot in Nigeria, uh, that would be fantastic. But right now, um, we're kind of limited to our options with regards to producing content for, show, for platforms like Netflix. Thank you, Eric. And finally, Brenda, you have the final words on what you think uh, is a way forward. You have a huge tax on your head as vice president of, of, of your uh, movie industry. Okay, I think the way forward uh, with regards to, to the COVID thing, we need to, just like Kunle said, it's left on us. In most uh, areas of Africa nowadays, the film industry rests on the filmmakers themselves. They know their businesses, they know their problems and everything. So it's left for us to channel our problems. I'll refer to what Peter said. We also have difficulties in our country for the, the entertainment and film industry being put at the bottom of, of the table when it comes to finances. So we haven't really been able to, to get the support that we need in the industry. Not that we need all the money, but we need certain, the, the government to ease up certain things for us to be able to market our movies because that's our greatest problem. If we can market our movies, create our own platforms, that would be good for us. But the way forward right now with the COVID, I think that we have to come up with our personal ways to fight this and propose it to the government so that they can implement. All and, right. Uh, of course, of Thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, Brenda is uh, the CEO of Obamanga One Entertainment and also uh, she is the vice president of the Cameroonian movie industry. Erica Klop is uh, Klopper is from SA and she runs a production house called Televisionaries. Uh, thank you. So Peter Sedufia is an award-winning director and movie producer right here in Ghana. And Bruce Cook, who is Ghanaian, is based in Burkina Faso, is an award-winning uh, producer as well. And Kunle, who just left us, uh, Kunle Afolayan is Nigerian.
Nigerian award-winning uh, movie producer, actor himself and director. That will be it for the conversation on the effect of COVID-19 on Africa's movie industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.